Welcome to episode three of Pico April. And in this episode, we're going to be having more fun with strings. Let's do this. Hey, everybody, it's Chris and Family Geekery. And today we're going to be learning more about strings and having some fun with them. But first, let's talk about the challenge from episode two. I gave you guys a challenge, so let's load that up. And last week's challenge was basically to create a simple little Mad Libs uh, program. So I gave you this much. I said in your init function, define four variables of food, which is a, a, a noun type of food, a verb, ending in ing, an adjective, and some number, which would be called age. And then I gave you the task of making the rest of this. So hopefully you guys had some fun with that. Hopefully you had somebody give you some funny answers for your Mad Libs, but let's look at how we do. So I have just on this first tab here, just the init, which is all I gave you. And on the second tab here, I've got my update and my draw functions. Now they don't always have to be in that first tab. They don't have to be in any particular order. They can be anywhere in this whole program, any tab that you want. So I went ahead and hid them over here so that you went to uh, be distracted by them with, with what we were doing. But basically all I did was I created a, a new function called draw text and you could have done all this stuff right in the draw function. Um, you didn't have to do a separate function. We're going to learn about that, I think, in about a week or so. Um, but basically all we did was we cleared the screen. We printed out some text. So Billy ate some, left a space there, and then concatenated in that second string of food. On the second line, we printed the text out again. He was blank, concatenated in verb, and then concatenated in the last string, which was all night, all night or all night long, whichever you wrote. And then the third line, he is a, and then we concatenated in adjective, left a space, concatenated in age, which was that number, and then concatenated in years old. So in that one, we actually have one string, another uh, number, Here's another string, which is just an empty space, and then another string, adjective, and then another string, he is a. So we've got like five things that we squished together there all in one line. And you may have done it different than that, but hopefully you did come up with a solution. And let me know down in the comments below how you did with that, if you, if you made a fun little Mad Libs or, you know, how it turned out. All right. So... With that out of the way, let's get right into this week's topic, which is going to be more fun with strings. All right, so learning more about strings, I'm gonna start off where we left off in video two. So if we look at the uh, functions here, this is where we were uh, defining a couple variables and then putting them on the, sc on the screen and then even concatenating them a little bit. So if you remember, we had, my name is Kevin, and I am 21 years old. Now, I went ahead and took out the, the part about the happy stuff. Um, we're not worried about that right now. So let's go ahead and continue on learning about strings. Now, what we're about to do uh, is going to be building on what we learned last time. So remember, if you haven't seen video 0, 1, or 2, then head back there and, and do that first. But especially video 2, or video two since this is going to be building directly right on exactly what we started or what we ended with. So why I'm doing this is what I want you guys to understand. Learning coding, which is what we're intending to do here, is just like learning another language. In fact, that's why they call them languages. That's why they call it, you know, basic and Lua and JavaScript. That's why they call them programming languages, because that's all it is. Now think about like languages in the sense that we think about them. And maybe if, if I went to Madrid and I didn't know their language, then obviously I'm going to have some problems. But, but I don't have to relearn what it is that I'm doing in life. I just have to relearn how to say it out loud. So the same thing holds true with, with coding. So think about, like, if, if I had to, this sudden urge, I'm, I'm in Madrid and I have the sudden urge to urinate. Well, my body... 
I don't have to relearn what that feeling is just because I'm in Madrid. I already understand that. Hopefully I learned that many, many years ago. I know, hey, I've got to pee. <laughs> if I was standing in a mall in America, then I would ask, you know, a security guard, hey, where is the nearest restroom? And that's how I would do it. Now, since I'm in Madrid, I don't have to relearn what it, what that sensation of needing to pee is. I already understand that. I just need to learn how to say it, how to ask somebody, you know, donde esta el baño or however it's said. So all I'm learning is the language. So if I didn't know that language, then either I would have a translator, someone help me translate, someone that understood my language and the language I need to talk, or I would Google it, or I would use some kind of fancy app that we have these days that can instantly translate, you know, what I'm saying to another language. That's all it is. So the same thing's true with, with coding. The stuff that we learn in this class, just because we're learning it in Lua, we're learning how to code. We just happen to be using the language Lua. Now later, if you want to use a different language, you don't have to relearn what it is that you're doing. You just have to relearn the syntax of how to make it you know, work. And remember last week we had that syntax error, and I said that basically just means something that I wrote was wrong. That was a syntax error. So we're learning the syntax for Lua. You know, later in life, you may learn the syntax for JavaScript. When we defined variables and print them to screen, you don't have to relearn really how to do that. You just have to relearn how to do that in another language. So even if what we're learning today doesn't seem super exciting for some game that you want to create in, uh, in Pico 8, maybe these things will, will help you out later in life when you're coding in a different language. All right, all that being said, Let's get on with this lesson more on strings. So back to this very simple program right here of my name is Kevin and I am 21 years old. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use another little built-in kind of function to find out how many letters long a string is, you know, what the string length. And in some languages, it's called exactly that, string length, string dot length or something like that. In Pico 8, it's even a little bit easier. So I'm going to start off by printing just an empty line here just to separate last week's stuff and this week's stuff. And I'm going to start off by saying my name is... And I want to type out, my name is five letters long, right? Because my name is Kevin. My name is five letters long. So I know I'm going to be concatenating some strings in here. So let's just leave a, a placeholder for what we're doing. And right now I've got my name is, we know we need to put something in here. And then we've got letters long. So if we close out this print and do it, of course, it, it doesn't understand what I'm trying to do because I don't have anything in here yet. But if I put in just like a five here, let's see if that would work. My name is five letters long. But if I change my name to something else, that's not going to hold true. So I want something in here instead of a, a hard-coded number five. I want something that is going to actually understand that there's five letters in his word. So... All we have to do, we know his name is name, but we don't want to know his name again. We've already got that on the screen. I want to know how many letters are in his name. Now, this right here, it looks funny on the screen, but that is a pound sign or, a, you know, a tic-tac-toe -to sign or a hash tag, whatever you want to call that. It looks funny on the screen, but that's all it is. So that's, this is just literally saying my name is number sign name and that's going to give me the length of that string so let's t try this out my name is five letters long very good so if we had changed his name and i'll just go up here to kevin and just add three more letters to it now it knows my name is eight letters long so it's just basically looking at how many letters are in that string, how long that string is, and it's putting it on the screen for me as a number. And since I've concatenated that in between two strings, then it knows how to get it onto the screen for me. Now what happens if I just add a couple extra spaces in here? So I just added three empty spaces. 
His name is still Kevin, but his name is now eight letters long. So that's because his name, the string name, is actually eight characters long. You can just only see five, five of them. So just keep that in mind. So now we've got this number sign, which lets us know how many letters some string is. Now that becomes important, especially when you're going to be formatting different strings on the screen and you want to make sure you leave enough space for different things. Uh, that, that allows you to know how long something is and it lets you, you know, put it on the screen the right way. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give him a nickname. All right, Kevin's nickname is Tiny. And I want to put on here my nickname is Tiny. And how is that going to work? Because I want Tiny to be in quotes. So my nickname is Tiny. And if I hit run on this, I get another syntax error. So something is wrong. And it's saying it's expecting me to close out the string function or the print function sooner than I am. And that's because look what I've done here. I've got an open quotes here and a close quotes here, even though they look the same. And then I've got this tiny thing, which Pico8 doesn't know what the heck that is. First of all, it's not concatenated in. Second of all, it's, it's a variable that's not defined. So tiny may be a number or a string or something, but it doesn't know because it's not defined. And then I've got too many extra quotes over here. So what it was, the syntax error is saying, it's expecting me to close this string or this print statement right here. I've got the open one here. Here's where the, the quotes end. It wants me to close it right there. Now, if I had concatenated that in, that would be fine as long as tiny was defined, but it's not. So I want to be able to put something in quotes. How do you put something in quotes inside quotes? Because it thinks, as soon as it sees this, it thinks that I'm stopping my string. Well, this is something that happens in, in every programming language, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's just something that you have to learn how to do, and it's called escaping. So it basically means you're escaping out of the normal format of text, and you're putting something in that you want the program to just ignore what you're putting in. So in this particular language, the escape code is a backslash. So this is basically saying, hey, Pico8, ignore this next thing. It's not part of my actual command. It's just something I want to put on the screen again. And then because I have one over here, I need to do the same thing. So ignore this quote. So now if we look at this entire statement here, and we start the print statement off with an open quote, and then we say, my nickname is, and then we tell Pico8, hey, ignore this next character, ignore the next character, then we say tiny, and then we say, hey, ignore this character. It really thinks tiny, now you can see it's blue and it's not gray. It doesn't think it's some new variable, it thinks it's just text. So it's ignoring the quotes, it's ignoring this quotes, so the next quote that it sees right here at the end of the screen is the one that closes out the entire print statement. And then after that, we've got our close bracket or close parentheses for the print statement. So let's see if escaping out those extra quotes worked for me. And boom, there you go. My nickname is, and now we've got in quotes, tiny. So that's something that if you want to print something on screen with quotes around it, then you're going to have to escape those quotes out because there's no way to print something without using, you know, the quotations. And if you need to put extra quotations in there, then just escape those out. Now, different programming languages have different escape characters, but just if you're using a different language, just learn what that is. And then now you know the concept of what, what escaping is. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to put his first initial on the screen. So he's very proud of his name, Kevin. So we're going to put print my first initial is, now again, I could just simply put K, but that's, that would be hard coding. And we said we don't want to hard code because if his name changes, if the name string changes, we want this letter to change also. So now we're going to learn another thing, and that is finding a substring of a string. 
So if you have some string equal A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you just want to see some subpart of it, then we need to find out how to tell Pico8 to just give us some part of it. And in this language, it's just simply a command called sub. So we're going to concatenate in something. And let's just start with sub, which now I see it, it's, it's starting to turn green. So I know it must be some kind of a function. So it wants some arguments. And the first argument it wants is what do I want to get a substring of? So what is the variable that I want to get just a part of? So the variable that we're trying to get just the first letter of is name. And then we need two more arguments because right now it's saying, hey, get a substring, make a substring of this name but we haven't told it how much of it to get or what characters to get. So the next two arguments that we're gonna put in there is gonna be the first character that you want and the last character that you want. So the, the number of characters that you want will be determined by these two numbers. So if I just want the very first letter only, then I'm gonna say, I want you to start your substring at the first character and end it at the first character. So if I had done one to five, and let's go ahead and close this out. So we're closing out the sub function, and now we need to close out the actual print function. If I do that one to five, it says my first initial is Kevin. So we definitely don't want that. So I just want from the first letter to the first letter. So when we run this now, my first initial is K. So, and I could use that substring to go anywhere in that name. If I just wanted the first two letters, I could go from one to two, and there's KE. If I wanted just the very middle letter, I could do three to three, and there's the V. So, sometimes you know exactly which letter you want. In this case, that's what we're doing. We're going from one to one. In some cases, you may programmatically decide how many letters to get. So in this case, this was, this was easy. Create a substring of name, starting with the first letter and ending with the first letter. Now this right here, now that we're doing this and you saw how I got, you know, it gets a little confusing with your, you're starting a, a quote or a, you're starting a parentheses here and ending it here for the sub function. And then we can't even see it on the screen, but we know there's a print function that we had to close out. Sometimes it's easier if we just take this and maybe right along here, right in the middle here, we just make a new, just define a new variable called fi for first initial and make that equal to the substring of name starting with the first letter, ending with the first letter. And now I can come back to here and instead of worrying about getting all this right and getting all the open and close parentheses right, I can just concatenate in that new variable that we created and it does the same exact thing. So sometimes it's just tidier to do it that way, especially since Pico8 doesn't give you too many characters across the screen before it starts scrolling. So you can start to lose sight of where your print, start, print statement started and where it ends. So sometimes this is fine. And this, this will be fine as long as this name is always what we want. And then all of this works with any name we put in here. If we made this Chris, then everything holds true. My first initial is C. And my name is still five letters long. So... Hopefully so far so good. Hopefully you're following me along here. We've got a way of finding out how many letters long something is with this ampersand, I'm sorry, with this uh, pound sign. We've got a way of escaping out characters. Like I don't want P08 
Topeka White to notice this quote and this quote, so we escape those out. And now we've got a way of getting a sub string of a string, whether you do it in line with it like we did at first, or you just define that anywhere along the way. And you can see that I can take this right here, this substring is going to become a string. Now it's only one letter long, but it's still a string. And I've just assigned that to a variable just like up here. I've assigned the name Kevin to the variable name. All right, so what's next? The next thing I want to do is I'm getting tired of seeing everything on the screen the same color. Now, next episode is going to be a real fun one because we're going to get into some graphics. But in this episode, we're just going to change the color of what we're putting to the screen. And there's several different ways of doing this. Um, this is going to be the simplest way. And we're just going to use a color command. And actually, let's go ahead and put it right in here. And we're just going to say color, and you can see right away it turned green, so it knows, hey, this is a function, so it must need some arguments. And the simplest thing that we can do is just add one argument to it, and that's going to be the color that we want to change to. So if we go up to our graphics tab here, our sprite tab here, this is the easiest way to figure out what your color choices are instead of memorizing them. And maybe I want everything to be light blue afterwards. So if I just hover over the light blue down at the bottom of the screen, it says color 12. So go back to my code, and I'll say color 12. And now anything I write after that is going to be blue. Now what's happening? Everything is blue. But I've just told it, print all this stuff, change to blue, and then print this. Well, the problem is, Think about this command right here. If you've used like Microsoft Paint or any kind of paint program or graphics program, you know that when you go up with your cursor and you grab some color, and then maybe you're gonna draw a shape on there or use the paintbrush. If you grab a color first, grab red, and then use your paintbrush, everything that you paint on the screen is gonna be red until you change to another color and you grab another color, and then everything you do is gonna be you know, blue or black, whatever you choose. And that's basically what this color command is doing. Now, the reason why it makes everything blue for us is because this function draw is not just happening once, it's happening over and over and over again. So if we could see it quick enough, it would actually print this gray, change the, basically your pen color or whatever you're, you're drawing with color, in this case it's text, to light blue and then it's gonna make this blue, but then it's gonna loop around and start again. Even though we're clearing the screen, we're not changing the color. So if we want this to happen just at the last line, then I have to find out what my first color was, and it was this one right here, six, and put that right after our clear screen. And now when I run, it knows clear the screen, change the text color to gray, write these four lines out, change the color to light blue, write the last line out, and then loop around. Now, that's exactly what it's doing. So it's, it's not smart enough to know we wanted to change back. We had to tell it to change back. As soon as we change the color here, everything after that, including looping, is going to be that color. All right. Now there is ways of just printing one line at, at a time in color, and, and that's gonna be something that we learn down the road. But right now, we're just changing the color. Now anything that we do after this point is gonna be that color. In this case, we're just doing text. It could be drawing graphics, it could be drawing pixels. In this case, it's just a line of text. So now we've got a way to change the color of text whenever we want to. And if we want the next line after that to go back to gray, then we better change back to gray right after that. So we got one last line to, to write up here. And that last line is going to be, instead of the first initial, we're going to look at the last letter in Kevin's name. So I want to print out the last letter of my name is, and then have that on the screen. So let's start off with the easy part first, print. 
the last letter in my name is, let's leave a space, close that first string out. We're going to be concatenating something in. Now, how do we get the last letter of his name? Now, there's a couple different ways of doing this. The, I'll show you the, the first way, which is built right on stuff that we've already learned in this episode. And then I'll show you the next way, which would be um, doing it just with something new. <laughs> so we know that Kevin's name is a certain amount of letters long. And we know that we want just the last letter of that. So we know we need a substring. And we know we want the substring of his name. We just need to know what do we put here. We can't put 5-5, five, five, even though that's going to be correct. If we go ahead and close this out, the last letter of my name is N, and that is correct. But we don't know if we change his name to Chris. It will still say the last letter of my name. Well, that wouldn't work. <laughs> but we, what if we changed his name to Kevin with three more extra random letters at the end? Now it's still saying the last letter of my name is N, which is not right. Because the last letter of his name really is, is F in this case. So we can't use 5-5. Five, five. So how did we learn how long his name was? Well, that was actually up here. So we learned that his name is a certain amount of characters long. And if we just want that last one, then we can just put in, instead of 5-5, five, five, we can put in pound name and then pound name. So that's saying I need a substring of name, which is Kevin, starting with the fifth letter, because we know he has five letters in his name and ending with the fifth letter. I don't know where that went. So this is knowing how long his name is and using that for the first and last character of the substring will give us the result we want. Now there's probably going to be an easier way than that or else I wouldn't have shown you the, the hard way first, of course. So we're going to get rid of all this. We do know that we need a substring of name, but we don't need all that nonsense. Let's just put negative one in here and see what happens. And boom, that's all it took is a negative one. So negative one means I, I want the last letter of this string. So it knows the string, it knows what the last letter is, and now we've got a substring of that name, which is just the last letter. Now, like I said, this is not something that's super intuitive. It's something that you just learn. So that's what you're here to do. So you could do it either way. Like I said, this way is just a little bit easier once you learn it. And let's see what happens if we say negative two. It's grabbing a substring of the last two letters in his name. So that's awfully handy. So we just want the last one. And it shows us that the last letter of his name is N. And that's just a nifty but little way of doing it without adding the, uh, the pound name, pound name as the first and last letter or first and last character of the substring. So there we go. Now later in the series, we're going to learn about tables. And we're going to figure out that this name here is actually a table of letters. And that's why this pound sign here is really just getting the size of the table of letters. So the more official way is doing this, which is getting the last entry in a table. It just happens to work exactly the same as the way that we showed it. So either one of those in this case is fine. It's going to give us the same result. All right, so let's quickly review everything that we've learned in this episode, and then I'm going to get to the challenge. And we started right here. We've printed a blank line to break up what we started with. 
from last week to this week. And we started off by writing, my name is this many letters long. And like I said, we found the number of letters in name by putting this pound sign in front. We learned how to escape out characters, in this case, escaping out the quotes using the backslash. We learned how to make a substring of a string and what two arguments to use for that. So the first and the last character that we want to get a substring of. Um, and this is, this is important for um, a, lot of, a lot of text formatting. We learned how to change the color of what we're putting to the screen, in this, in this case, text, and how to change the color back. We learned how to put the first initial up by, making, by using this substring. And we learned how to put the last letter of the name up by using the substring with a negative one to, to signify the last character of this string. So hopefully that was informative to you. So let's go ahead and get to this week's challenge. And in this week's challenge, we are going to be using, again, just the stuff that we've learned so far in the course. So all the stuff that we learned, of course, in this episode are going to be fair game. Um, and again, there's going to be different ways of doing this, but we're just going to do it um, with the tools that we've learned so far. So let's go ahead and show you what your challenge is going to be. And I'll be right back. All right, for this week's challenge, what I want you to do is we're going to start by just defining one variable named name and give it the word Kevin. In this case, we're gonna, we're gonna all stick to Kevin. And what I want you to do is come up with a way of doing this. Writing Kevin's name straight down the screen. So starting at the very top left, we get K-E-V-I-N. And in this case, like I said, we're just going to all have the same um, same name. We're all going to have the same amount of letters, and that's how you're going to do this. Now, once we get further in the course, if this name changes, we'll have the same way of doing this, and it will work right. But in this case, we are just going to be doing it with Kevin, five letters long, straight down the left side of the screen. So that's your challenge. Have fun with it. Ask questions uh, in the comments. If you want, if you don't want spoilers, then don't look at those comments. But have fun with it, and let's see you next week if you come up with an answer. So that is going to wrap up episode three of Pico April. Hope you're still having fun with this. Hope you're learning a lot. If you are, give me that thumbs up, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episodes. Our next one coming up, like I said, will be episode four coming up this Friday. And that is going to be some simple graphics, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you had fun with the text this week. Um, at the end of the week, we'll have some fun with graphics. So thanks as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.